First of all, welcome to any new BHL partners and staff who might be attending their first BHL annual meeting. I'm Colleen Funkhauser, BHL's program manager. I am part of the Secretariat, which is headquartered at Smithsonian Libraries and Archives in Washington, DC. I help support BHL's administration, including financial management, documentation, internal and external communications, uh, meeting planning, like this annual meeting, and much more. I'm also a liaison to the technical team and the persistent identifier working group. As Martin mentioned in his program director's report, the BHL Secretariat has seen some staffing changes over the past year. In July 2021, longtime BHL Outreach and Communication Manager Grace Costantino left BHL to pursue a career in art and design. In January 2022, BHL announced the new role of Data Manager and welcomed JJ Dearborn to the Secretariat. We'll get to hear more about JJ's new role and responsibilities in her talk later in the meeting. With Grace's departure in 2021, we announced a number of changes to our outreach program. Grace and the Secretariat reviewed what activities would remain, in what capacity, uh, and who would take on those roles and responsibilities. These changes were detailed on the BHL internal wiki if you would like to review those in greater detail. For the most part, I have taken on um, the role of point of contact for most of BHL's outreach and communications. So if you have any questions about these items, um, please don't hesitate to reach out to me directly. Just to review some of those changes that we put in place in July 2021 and that continue to today, uh, Twitter is now used in a broadcast only manner, primarily to announce uh, any new blog posts that we publish, upcoming events, or to share tech alerts if there is an issue with the BHL website. Instagram uh, was already on hiatus starting in 2020 and that remains on hiatus. Facebook is also on hiatus. And our um, Flickr photo stream is on hiatus. The, the photo stream is still available to the public. Uh, the public can still uh, tag our photos, but we are no longer uploading new images to the stream. We continue to share new blog posts, but at a reduced frequency. Uh, most of the posts lately have focused on program and tech updates. Partners are still welcome to submit featured book posts, uh, but the regular BHL user and book of the month series that Grace coordinated um, have both been suspended. I'm not actively garnering uh, new content for those series, but again, if you have any um, featured content that you'd like to share from the collections you're uploading to BHL, I do still welcome those sub submissions, so please reach out to me directly. The BHL newsletter uh, is now published on a biannual rather than a quarterly basis. The latest newsletter was just published in May. If you haven't had a chance to take a look at that, it is linked from the About site under Newsletters. Our annual report uh, will now be a web-based publication with embedded Tableau dashboards for, for sharing our regular statistics. The first report in this new format was released in early 2022, and it covered the 2020 and 2021 time periods. Promotional materials such as the BHL informational sheet and the about BHL PowerPoint presentations that I'm sure many of you use uh, when you're attending meetings or presenting uh, about BHL at conferences, uh, those are now updated on a quarterly basis rather than a monthly basis. We do still have some BHL promotional materials in print. Um, and we have, now that we have regular access to our office space at the Smithsonian Libraries and Archives, I can once again ship out BHL business cards and brochures to partners upon request. I sent out a few earlier um, this month. And uh, if you have, if your supplies are running low, please reach out to me directly to coordinate um, a shipment. Lastly, strategic plan goal number three, uh, user engagement, focuses heavily on our outreach program with a number of activities to be led or co-led by the outreach and communication manager, along with an outreach committee um, that we intended to form. Since BHL will not be rehiring this position, implementation of goal three um, really needs to be reassessed. 
We'll be discussing pro proposed revisions to goal three during the annual meeting on Monday, uh, June 6th. So we'll be dedicating um, a significant portion of the agenda to that discussion later in the meeting. With most of our outreach activities on hiatus or operating in a reduced capacity beginning in mid-2021, uh, the associated statistics around our outreach saw a drop-off in engagement compared to 2020. Um, it's worth noting, however, that 2020 was a banner year in terms of publicity for BHL, with a large spike in traffic to our Flickr, Flickr photo stream our website and our social media platforms. Um, there was a promotion of our Flickr stream uh, in a very popular article, which was then picked up by several other publications. Uh, this means that the 2020 outreach stats were higher than usual, which can make comparing the changes we made in 2021 versus the 2020 um, spike in activity um, a difficult comparison. Comparing the 2021 outreach stats to 2022 will be more telling of the changes to our outreach activities. Let's take a closer look at our social media channels. Though BHL social media channels still experience slight gains in followers, uh, an increase of about 5% over 2020, uh, that is still significantly lower than that 42% increase from 2019 to 2020. The BHL newsletter, however, still garnered over 1,600 new subscribers and maintained an above average click through and open rate in 2021. These rates have really held steady for the past several years. With our reduced blog posting schedule and reduced promotion of the blog on social media, we saw a drop off in visits and visitors to the BHL blog compared to 2020. However, the total visits and visitors to the blog in 2021 were still higher than in 2018 and 2019. Because 2020 saw such a steep increase, 43% um, increase in visitors uh, to the blog, 2021 represents more of a return to the previous normal traffic. Again, a comparison of 2021 to this year um, will be much more telling. And finally, the traffic to the BHL website from our outreach channels also saw a sharp decrease of 39% over the 2020 totals. Even compared back to 2018 and 2019 traffic from outreach channels, the 2021 totals were also a decrease. We would expect that considering our decreased activity uh, on social media platforms. These dashboards that I just showed you are included in the 2020-2021 BHL annual report, along with program news and updates, collections and access stats, and examples of BHL's impact on research. You can view that report from the About site uh, or by visiting um, this link, s.si.edu slash BHL 2020-21 report. As a participant in the Persistent Identifier Working Group, I'd also like to share an update on our activities in 2021. Nicole Carney, Manager of BHL Australia and Chair of the Working Group will be sharing much more about this work in her presentation at the BHL Symposium as part of the Spinach 2022 Conference on Tuesday, June 7th. The PID PIWG was formed in October 2020 with three core goals to add article level metadata to journal articles on BHL, to add existing DOIs to either new or existing article landing pages on BHL, and to assign BHL DOIs to articles that lack them. To achieve these goals, the working group first audited our existing processes and workflows for adding article metadata and registering DOIs uh, per Crossref standards. We also created a list of priority journals for DOI assignment. In 2021, the working group worked to define a new workflow within BHL to assign DOIs. We worked with the tech team to define and test requirements for new functionalities to support this work. These enhancements include functionality to bulk edit segment, segment or article metadata using an import tool, and a new feature to queue titles and segments for registering BHL DOIs with Crossref. DOIs had previously been assigned, but mostly at the title level 
using an automated process with a preset selection criteria. The group then worked, uh, helped document these new workflows for the consortium to eventually extend this work beyond the working group. PIWG members contributed to the extensive segments documentation that was coordinated by Joel Richard, Susan Lynch, and Diana Duncan. The working group also developed a new guide on how to assign DOIs to content in VHL. The PIWG also provided feedback to Bianca Crowley about revisions to PHL's license agreement to take into account uh, this new work on DOIs. In November 2021, the group provided two training sessions to BHL staff on adding segment metadata to BHL. A recording is available from the BHL YouTube channel for future reference. With this new functionality and documentation in place, the group worked hard in 2021 to ramp up DOI assignment. In 2021 alone, the working group assigned 11,132 new DOIs to content in BHL. And uh, what you see here is just a small sampling of some of the titles the group worked on in 2021. First, curating the article level metadata to define segments within BHL content, then registering the DOIs with Crossref. These articles can now be easily referenced and linked to the modern scholarly publication ecosystem. We hope you're able to register for the Spinach 2022 conference the week of June 5th, so you can tune into Nicole Carney's talk. She'll share much more on the work of the PIWG and its importance as part of the symposium titled Reflections on the Biodiversity Heritage Library, Value in Collections and Collaboration. Since this year's annual meeting occurs much later in the year, we've already reviewed the 2021 year-end spending summary, the 2022 spending plan, and even the first quarter 2022 spending summary. Instead, I'll share the highlights from 2021 and any significant changes to 2022. As Martin mentioned in his report, BHL continues to garner strong donations throughout the pandemic. Donations in 2021 exceeded $20,000. Donations in the first quarter of this year already top $8,000. These increased donations over the past two years have helped offset some of our changes in our dues revenue. In 2021, we went from 20 members and 22 affiliates to 90 members and 22 affiliates. Conavio, which coordinates BHL uh, Mexico's program, reduced their participation from a full member to an affiliate level. Also, the merger of our existing member, Smithsonian Libraries, and existing affiliate, Smithsonian Institution Archives, into a single unit called the Smithsonian Libraries and Archives, resulted in one less affiliate dues payment. In November 2021, the executive committee approved a reduced dues plan for the next couple of years to help alleviate some of the financial burdens caused by the ongoing pandemic. So for this calendar year, members are paying a reduced rate of 8,000 US dollars um, and affiliates 800 US dollars. Next year, uh, dues will be 9,000 for members, 900 for affiliates. And then in 2024, the dues will return to the former rate of 10,000 for members and 1,000 for affiliates. BHL is able to absorb this reduced dues income thanks to those strong donations, as well as reduced expenses around travel and meetings for the past two years. We still expect uh, a higher than usual carryover at the end of this year, which will help offset those reduced dues again in 2023. Um, another change this year is the member stipend for the annual meeting. Since this year's annual meeting is being held in, in conjunction with the Spanish conference, BHL is not incurring some of the regular annual meeting costs that we would in past years. So for 2022, the EC proposed and members approved using these meeting funds and other member travel funds to instead provide $800 stipends to BHL members to help support the cost of attending the joint conference and annual meeting, whether in person or virtually. Uh, another change this year is the um, increased fees for Crossref. Uh, the fees themselves did not increase, but we anticipate registering more DOIs than we have in the past, thanks to the work of the Persistent Identifier Working Group that I just mentioned. So we budgeted for an increase in fees for those Crossref DOI registrations. 
Also of note, the current 2022 spending plan um, does not list funds for the former PAN BHL scanning fund. Planning for our scanning support was put on hold in 2020 as most partner institutions stopped scanning due to closures and as the financial outlook was uncertain. During the members council meeting on June 9th, we'll have a chance to revisit this topic and discuss possible new strategies for collections and acquisition support for BHL members. Thank you for taking the time to hear from me as BHL's program manager. We'll have time during the live portion of the annual meeting for questions and discussion. I look forward to finally meeting some of you in person in Edinburgh and to seeing the rest of you online.